In today's video, we're gonna talk about how silver and gold could be used as a backup plan to help you combat small-scale financial hardships and large-scale economic disasters. And I'm also gonna be going live in the VIP club tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Link in the description if you wanna join. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great, and staying safe. It's a great day to have a great day. Today, I wanted to talk about silver and gold and how we can use the precious metals as somewhat of a backup plan. We're gonna get into it, but really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there, go check it out. The link will be in the description. And if you wanna get some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel, I would really, really, really appreciate it. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance, it's more than appreciated. But today, I wanted to talk about how silver and gold can help us in a variety of different ways. Now, there are three main ways it could potentially help us. One would be on a micro level, personal financial hardship. Two would be a more macro level financial disaster, such as inflation over a long period of time. And three would be a huge, large scale, catastrophe such as a potential collapse of the US dollar bill which I don't necessarily believe would happen but if you want to know my thoughts on that right there that's what yesterday's video was about this right here is an extension on yesterday's video I wanted to talk about the first two personal financial hardships and larger scale inflation later down the road and I want to share a little bit of a story as well I'm gonna start with the micro I'm gonna start with personal financial hardships and this is something that I learned twice. I'm the kind of guy who I guess I don't learn my lesson the first time around. I had to learn my lesson twice. My financial IQ was not where it should have been and it ended up slapping me in the head on two separate occasions several years apart. The first time I was working for this facility and the general manager at the time, she had a death in the family and she had to temporarily or permanently move to Philadelphia. I didn't know if it was permanent or how long it was gonna last. And I went in and I met with the guy that was going to take her place. We were having a conversation and it started out as very amicable and professional. And he was telling me, there's one thing this place lacks and it's innovation. We need to innovate and I have innovative ideas. So he ran some of these ideas by me and he asked for my opinion. He asked for my input and I told him, I said, hey, well, since you're asking, uh -oh. just letting you know, we get trophies. We get awards every single year for doing things the way that we do things. Since you're asking for my opinion, it seems almost like you're trying to reinvent the wheel. Since you're asking for my input, it seems like you're trying to fix something that isn't broken, which I don't think is the right move. Well, I thought that was pretty reasonable. Well, innovative Lewis had to disagree. He told me, well, I have innovative ideas and all my decisions are final. Innovative ideas. Fair enough. Ever since then, he continued to give me a hard time. He was making the workplace pretty much unbearable. It was out of control. And I said, hey, you know what? I'm going to take my lunch break. So I went out to the car, made one phone call, got a new job, went back in and resigned. I quit! Now, the reason I consider this to be somewhat of a financial hardship, it wasn't really anything bad, but the reason I consider it to be one is because, number one, the new job, it started out as somewhat of a pay cut, and what if I didn't get a new job right away? What if I didn't go in and resign? What if I didn't leave on my terms? What if Innovative Lewis got so frustrated and couldn't handle that he didn't have a yes man by his side, put in a bad word, or, or, or tried to get me fired, and I couldn't get that new job right away? What then? So that was the first example. The second, believe it or not, was at the same exact job a year and a half later. 18 months down the road, I was still working at that new job. I actually got invited back to the facility because the original general manager came back, and the guy who took her place got terminated because he was doing all types of spending and he wasn't bringing in any revenue. I couldn't believe it. Him and all his innovative ideas weren't so good after all. Maybe you shouldn't try to reinvent the wheel. Maybe you shouldn't fix something that isn't broken. 
Anyway, a couple months down the road, the owner of the facility was so driven into debt because of Innovative Lewis, he couldn't afford to keep the facility going. So he sold the business. And I met with the new owner as soon as that took place. He told me, he said, you can have your job back. Same thing, same everything, just simply a different owner of the business. You're just going to have to give us a couple of months to get everything set up. Now to myself at the time and to pretty much anybody else in the world, you can't just go a couple of months without working. You need the fiat. You need the currency. How am I going to eat? What if I had kids to feed? What if I had a family to take care of? What if I had all of these crazy financial responsibilities? What if I hadn't spent the last couple of years reducing my expenses? So the first time around, it wasn't really that much of a financial hardship. The second time around, it was. And ever since then, I said, I will never be in this position again. I will never be caught in this scenario the rest of my life. I don't care what it takes. I'll work two jobs. I'll work three jobs if I have to. Just so if I lose one, if I get laid off, or if the business goes under or something goes wrong, and one of my streams of income gets taken away from me, at least I'll have another. This is what I'm talking about when it comes to micro-level financial hardships. Losing your job or potentially sustaining an injury or getting sick and all of a sudden you can't go to work. Maybe you are physically unable to perform the tasks that your job requires you to do. Disability, unemployment, something on a personal level, something happens. Get into a little car accident and all of a sudden you have to get your car fixed or just something else goes wrong. Some small-scale financial issue. Just a financial headache. The silver and the gold, moral of the story, is that if I had silver and gold, or if I even had fiat at the time, which I did have a little bit, not enough to last me a couple of months. This was before the silver and the gold. But if I had an emergency fund at the time, if I had silver and gold at the time, it could have helped keep me afloat. The silver and the gold at the end of the day, all it is, is a physical at-home savings account, somewhat. In my opinion, from my perspective, I think it offers a little bit of a better interest rate, if you know what I'm talking about, rather than 0.0000001% that the bank so generously offers you on fiat that's depreciating every second of every minute of every hour of every day of every week of every month of every year of every decade. I'd say the depreciation outperforms the interest. Now moving away from micro level financial hardships such as losing your job or getting hurt, maybe have a medical bill or car repairs or whatever the case may be. Let's talk about macro level inflation the dollar bill getting weaker over time. I already started to segue into this, but now I wanted to talk about this rather than the personal financial hardships and using this as somewhat of a physical at-home savings account or emergency fund. Silver and the gold, they appreciate in value as currency depreciates in value. So as this stuff, as the currency gets weaker, real true honest money becomes stronger. Real true honest money and what I mean by that is internationally recognized as money, biblically recognized as money, constitutionally recognized as money. It's been money for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. This is a man-made invention that's getting weaker as time goes by. But even if I had a couple months worth of fiat stashed away, even that would have been better than having nothing. But you know what's better than having something that's kind of fading away. Having something that's here to stay. I didn't even mean to rhyme, but I like the way that sounded, so I'm rolling with it. The silver and the gold being somewhat of a physical at-home savings account that is used to hedge against inflation and it's just a store of value. I believe 
is a whole lot better off than the dollar bill. Now that's not financial advice, by the way. Nothing on this channel is ever financial advice. Make sure you're doing your own research, forming your own opinions, making your own decisions based off of your conclusions, not mine. But my conclusion is that the silver and the gold is a whole lot better off and stronger and more of an opportunity and has more potential and can outlast the fiat. The dollar bill, little by little, as they print more and more and more. I mean, what do we see already taking place? $1.9 trillion coming out of nowhere, out of thin air, being physically printed or digitally created, which is even more scary if you think about it. The more they print, the more dollar bills they create, the more dollar bills that there are in existence, the weaker these become. And the purchasing power, little by little by little, slowly but surely, although seems like it's going to start speeding up a little bit, begins to diminish. It loses the purchasing power. It becomes weaker, more brittle over time. The dollar bill, I mean this right here, let's rewind 10, 15, 20, 50 years ago. How much could a $50 bill buy you at the grocery store? Probably quite a bit more than a $50 can buy you at the grocery store nowadays. In fact, here's another personal example. Every single week when I go to the grocery store, it costs me about 50 bucks. $50 a week, give or take. And I'm just feeding myself. I don't have kids. I'm not married. And I plan on keeping it that way. I don't want kids and I don't want to get married. Just myself to take care of. But if I had a wife and two kids, let's just say, if my math is correct, sounds like it would run me closer to $200 a week. I don't got the currency to spend $200 a week on food. I don't even like spending $50 a week on food. But what's going to happen in another 10 to 15 years when I'm still only taking care of myself? 10, 15 years down the road, is it going to cost me $50 just to buy one week's worth of groceries? Or is it going to cost me closer to $55? Probably by the end of the year, I wouldn't be surprised if it was costing me about $55. Or maybe a little bit more. But 10 to 15 years down the road? God, I wouldn't be surprised if I was spending $70 a week. The silver and the gold are designed to work as a tool, as a hedge against inflation. The most simple way I can explain this, and this is a way that I've explained it a couple of times in the past, so bear with me if you've heard me give this example before, but picture a $20 bill. What happens if over a little period of time, 10, 15 years, or, or even five years, two years, doesn't matter, just hypothetical scenario, if the dollar bill loses half of its current purchasing power, that would mean $20 would only be able to buy you what $10 would have bought you back in the day, which is something that we see happen time and time and time again as the dollar bill gets weaker. But what happens if instead of holding onto the $20 bill and allowing it to lose half of its purchasing power, you put the $20 into a little bit of silver, let's just say, silver, potentially gold? If the dollar bill loses half of its purchasing power, that would likely mean that the strength of silver and gold would be on the incline. So what happens if that $20 worth of silver then becomes worth about $40 worth of silver? Does that mean that you doubled your cash, doubled your currency, doubled your fiat? I guess from somebody's perspective, yeah. That's not really how I see it, though. I would see it as a store of value because I could take that $20 worth of silver, which is now worth $40 worth of silver, and convert it into two of these bills right here. Convert it into $40. Now, you didn't really double your fiat. It might appear that you did. But keep in mind, the purchasing power of the dollar bill was chopped in half. So the $40 can only buy you what $20 could have bought you back in the day. And how much cash did you put into silver back in the day? $20. That $20 worth of value was stored in the silver. All that you're left with 
is twice as much cash as you started with, but it's half as weak as the cash you started with. So you're pretty much in the same boat, which I know might sound like a bad thing, but imagine not putting the cash into silver and the gold. Then instead of having $40 worth 20, you would only have $20 worth 10. I'd rather have $40 worth 20 than $20 worth 10. That's just my opinion from my perspective. Nothing on this channel's financial advice. Just a hypothetical scenario. I wanted to give an example of the micro. I wanted to give an example of the macro. Again, if you want to hear an example of potential SHTF situation, like a collapse of the dollar bill or, or some doomsday crazy scenario, which I personally don't believe is going to happen, watch yesterday's video. I talked all about it. That was the focal point of yesterday's video. And for the record, I'm not hoping for the dollar bill to come crashing down. I'm not hoping for inflation to completely obliterate the dollar bill. I personally want nothing but the best for the dollar bill, and I hope to God that it outlives me. Based on all the printing that's getting done right now and all the digital creation of dollar bills that is getting done right now, I don't really have all that much faith in the dollar bill, and I never really did have all that much faith in the dollar bill considering it's just a piece of paper with pictures and, and numbers and, and words written all over it. There's no intrinsic value. I mean, what's the difference between these three little sheets of paper? If you close your eyes and shuffle them up, they're all exactly the same. They're all the same size. They're all the same weight. They're all the same everything. You can only tell the difference between these three sheets of paper if your eyes are open, if you're reading what they say. There's no difference between them. There's no difference between the five and the 20 or the 20 and the 50 or the 50 and the five absolutely no difference. The only reason some are worth more than others is because we've come to a mutual agreement that some are worth more or less than others. That's all it is. That's just fiat. That's how currency works. That is not how money works. Money weighed in troy ounces, not in dollar bills, not in US dollars or Canadian dollars or Australian dollars or euros or pounds or anything like that. Troy ounces. Hope this video was somewhat helpful, somewhat insightful, gave some examples and told a story I don't think I've told in a very long time on here. So head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic and what you think about having a backup plan of precious metals. And if anybody's interested in joining the Precious Metals VIP Club, it's where I can do things on my own terms, not on YouTube's terms, my terms. I'm hosting privately held live streams. They're smaller and easier to manage. I will be going live tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come hang out. I'm also doing giveaways, discounts, personalized promo codes, shout outs, deal alerts when silver and gold is on sale on a variety of different websites. And of course, you can watch all of my videos early and commercial free. Come join the Precious Metals VIP Club. It'll be the first link in the description. You're invited. I'd be happy to have you. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. If you guys like me, make sure to hit that subscribe button like a Karen hits a bus window. Or you can hit the subscribe button like a Karen hits another Karen. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there. Go check it out. The link will be in the description. Trying really hard to hit 2,000 subscribers. We just hit 1,900 and I appreciate that. Having a little bit of a race right now, seeing which channel can hit a milestone first. My main channel is only a couple subscribers away from 15,000, and my backup channel is only a couple subscribers away from 2,000. Head on down to the comments and let me know which one you think is going to hit the milestone first. And of course, if you want to help support the channel in the biggest possible way, please consider getting yourself some DYDSS merchandise. Of course, we have some precious metal themed t-shirts and hoodies, which are up for grabs, along with a ton of other products. T-shirts, hoodies, even stickers, many of which are raising funds and awareness for different charity organizations, such as the recently released Kraken Stacken T-shirt, hoodie, sticker, and coffee mug, inspired by the beautiful two-ounce silver Kraken coin, which, by the way, is helping us raise a little bit of funds and awareness for ocean cleanup charity organizations. At no additional cost to you, it comes out of my pocket, not yours. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. And I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know once again, what are your thoughts 
on today's video topic. Are you using silver and gold as somewhat of a backup plan just in case? Maybe you feel like it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Maybe that's the main reason you're stacking for. Maybe you're stacking the silver and the gold for micro level financial hardships. Maybe you've dealt with something that I've dealt with in the past where there was some type of work job situation and maybe you got your income reduced or maybe you got laid off or maybe something went wrong or you changed jobs or just something happened something on a micro level maybe you had to do some type of emergency car repair or a medical expense and you didn't have the cash or the silver or the gold as financial preparation and then when it comes to a more macro level i think that's one of the main reasons a lot of people are involved in the silver and the gold it's a way of preserving your wealth for the long term rather than allowing your fiat glorified IOU piece of paper debt notes to slowly but surely depreciate in value and lose purchasing power. You can use the precious metals as somewhat of a way to store value if that's a decision you come to on your own, if that's something that you decide to do. Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, don't you dare stop smiling. Peace. Innovative ideas.